Hello Info person, this is Anton and welcome back to Mars. I mean, hypothetically speaking. And that's because today we're going to be discussing some of the most fascinating discoveries from the Red Planet, focusing on certain studies that were a little bit surprising, and a few more discoveries that were completely unexpected. And though in previous videos we mostly focused on the surface of Mars, exploring its endless deserts and its ancient riverbeds, with the main focus of course being the discovery of some kind of a sign of life. Today we're going to focus on some of the most profound secrets of the red planet that seem to be hidden deep within its core. And so we're going to be diving beneath the surface of Mars, exploring strange structures unearthed by one of the probes working on Mars a few years back. But also compare them to something extremely similar we know exists inside Earth, and something that has previously been associated with some kind of an ancient planet. And so in this video we're not just discussing Mars, we're going to try to understand how planets are built and how they evolve. But as always, like in previous videos on Mars, we're going to begin with rocks. And actually, strange rocks. And I think this one was probably the strangest from the last few months. This was discovered by Curiosity, and it seems to resemble some kind of a coral-like formation. Although, just so that we're clear, this is definitely not coral, because we kind of know how this was formed, and it's unlikely to have involved life. But essentially here you're seeing something that's just a few centimeters across, and is a direct testament that once upon a time, Mars was wet and contained water. Here water seeps through cracks, depositing various minerals that eventually hardened, but then billions of years later, as this rock was exposed to the current Martian conditions, wind and sand blasting eventually eroded some of the softer surroundings, leaving behind these very intricate formations. And so this discovery highlights repetitive natural patterns across different environments that exist on Mars and of course exist on our own planet as well. And the thing is Mars Gale Crater, where the Curiosity rover is currently exploring, is known to contain a lot of such unique formations, shaped by ancient water and billions of years of wind erosion. And you can learn more about some of the previous discoveries in some of the videos in the description. Some of them actually even resemble flowers or even bones. But scientists are pretty certain they're neither flowers nor bones. Uh, they're just rocks. Kinda like this little guy. And this one was captured by Perseverance. It's now referred to as the Helmet Rock. Mostly because I guess it kind of resembles some kind of a conquistador helmet. But for scientists it's not really exciting because of the shape. For scientists this is exciting because of these unusual spherules. Which normally can form either through chemical weathering, mineral precipitation or even volcanic processes. And so figuring out how this rock was formed is actually a lot more intriguing and a lot more interesting. But right now we don't know much about it. And unfortunately Perseverance doesn't have enough instruments to try to understand how this was formed. But it might have once again involved water. But apart from rocks, Curiosity has also discovered something else that's just as exciting for scientists. A really complex organic molecule. This was reported in this study by Hirsch and Sefton. But in essence this was a detection of the largest organic molecule ever found on Mars inside a rock that was approximately 3.7 billion years old. And by itself this is already pretty exciting. But we don't really know where this molecule came from and how exactly it formed. We just know that it contains a long chain of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen, possibly similar to decaying and dodecane, but could also be some kind of a fragment of a fatty acid. Which is of course a key component for biological substances. And though this could be signs of past life, it could also have formed through non-biological geological processes. And so this is not signs of life. We just know that based on a lot of different studies, there seem to be quite a lot of these complex molecules on the surface of Mars. So the chance for life is still pretty high. And in terms of possibility of life, there's actually been another really exciting study that has discovered something super cool. Now obviously for life on Earth, we know that liquid water is absolutely essential. No water, no life. But so far on Mars, no liquid water has been identified pretty much anywhere, and only water ice and water molecules have been discovered individually. But we have some really exciting discoveries from this recent study. Here research suggests that liquid salty brines can actually form on Mars at least twice a day. Or just to rephrase this, there is a very high chance for very salty liquid water to form for very brief periods of time in certain locations and during certain seasons. And specifically we're talking about calcium perchlorate brines, which can stay liquid at very low temperatures and can potentially support 
hardy microbial life. Or at least they do so on our own planet because we have very similar salty water here and microbial life usually exists inside, even thriving in certain conditions. And so based on this recent study, and by using older data from the Viking to Lander, here scientists demonstrated that brines could form for maybe about 30 Martian days at the end of the Martian winter as frost sublimates. In other words, there's a chance for liquid water to maybe exist sometimes. And so small amounts of liquid brine could be generated by the seasonal recurring frost. With this study also redefining our understanding of these transient liquids, emphasizing that in certain conditions, interaction between the frost and the salt, in theory, could allow liquids to form. And so when it comes to this proposition, I'm actually kind of curious to see what other studies are able to discover. But then we also have a discovery that's maybe a little bit more lightweight. Well, you can actually see it right here. Apparently, a lot of Martian dust and a lot of Martian dirt is way more fluffy than what we find on Earth. And so generally, a lot of wheels here get stuck much more frequently. In other words, for future missions, engineers are going to have to take this into consideration. Due to lower gravity and due to much fluffier dust, it's just a little bit more difficult to drive on Mars. But now let's discuss something from inside the planet. Because for many years, we pictured Mars as having very neat, smooth layers. Layers that would contain crust, mantle, and core. But because of the discoveries from the inside lander, this view has now changed. And so here, by listening to over 1300 different Mars quakes over a period of about 4 years, researchers were able to discover dozens of mysterious blobby structures hidden within Martian mantle. In this case, this was discovered the same way we usually find things inside our own planet. And so here, these bizarre structures, measuring up to about 4 kilometers across, seem to represent much denser and much heavier surrounding material, implying that its chunks made out of something entirely different. And because there were so many of them inside Mars, the lead author behind the study, Dr. Charles Lambus, described these structures as ancient fragments, with these blobs potentially being remnants of some kind of a colossal impact that very likely happened four and a half billion years ago during the chaotic days of the early solar system, and very likely involved some kind of a protoplanetary object that collided with early Mars, with this impact generating immense energy, melting large parts of the young planet, but also leaving behind very large chunks of compositionally different material that's now stuck inside Mars in various locations. And if you've watched enough videos on this channel, you're probably aware of something very similar inside our own planet. Just like Mars, Earth contains its own blobs, but actually much, much larger in size, that we usually refer to as LLSVPs, Large Low Shear Velocity Provinces, immense blobs trapped inside the mantle, that we've discussed in some of the previous videos in the description, and that we know seem to produce a lot of different effects on the surface of the planet, including various types of volcanism. And since their origin has been kind of linked to a huge collision between early Earth and a planet known as Theia, we can assume that something very similar potentially happened on Mars. But because these blobs are so much larger than the ones on Mars, here we can conclude that the collision on Mars was potentially much, much smaller. On Earth, this represents approximately 8% of the entire mantle. But there's obviously one more important difference. Compared to Earth, Mars is also geologically still. It's basically a single plate planet that does not contain any plate tectonics, and Martian crust very likely solidified very early, forming what the scientists refer to as the stagnant lid. And so the internal structure of Mars very likely evolved very slow, and potentially has not changed much over time. Whereas on Earth, these structures would have already been recycled and changed dramatically, and so most of this would look very differently. And so these blobs on Mars seem to have been preserved for billions of years, and are now more or less inert and don't seem to affect Mars much. In essence, the Martian blobs are the fossilized remnants from its violent birth, representing a kind of an unchanging record of some of the earliest moments in the history of Mars. But for Earth, LLSVPs are active participants and seem to affect Earth's geological processes at all times. And more importantly, they seem to affect Earth in so many other ways. Once again, if you want to learn more, check out the previous video in the description. But I guess the question is, why did Earth and Mars evolve so differently, and why do they look so different today? Well, here we do have a few more hints based on the observations of the Martian surface and the differences in Martian crust. This is actually a relatively old puzzle referred to as the Martian dichotomy that refers to dramatic differences between Martian southern highlands, which usually contain a lot of craters and is also much higher, actually several kilometers higher, 
compared to the northern lowlands, which are very smooth, very flat, and much younger. And well, for decades this was believed to be maybe the result of some kind of a collision, which would actually also explain the blobs inside. But once again, the Marsquake data seemed to show something a little bit different. By looking at how Marsquakes propagate through the northern and the southern part of Mars, researchers found that the rock beneath the southern highlands seems to be overall a little bit hotter than the northern lowlands, with this temperature difference suggesting that it was really the internal forces and not the external impact that potentially caused Mars to look so different. With the models now basically explaining this as some kind of a geological activity very early on that eventually suddenly stopped. Or basically Mars might have had moving tectonic plates at some point, with the movement of these plates and the molten rock beneath them creating the unevenness, but it then essentially solidified and stopped freezing in place for billions of years. And this very likely happened billions of years ago and potentially doomed Mars to lose its atmosphere and its water. And so the mechanism that in this case preserved these blobs seem to have also created the overall shape of the Martian surface. And by the way, this is something we think might happen to Earth as well, but possibly like hundreds of millions of years in the future. But once again, Mars here offers us a kind of a snapshot of early chaotic planetary development that's now been frozen in time. Whereas our own planet is still geologically active and still constantly changing, which is why it looks so different today compared to Mars and even Venus. But this also makes Mars unique for geology, because its surface, its crust and even its mantle have become sealed for billions of years and remained largely undisturbed, providing us with a very important window into the violent past that shaped the early solar system. And so by learning what's happening on Mars today, we're actually going to understand what happened on Earth billions of years ago. Because this is basically like looking back in time. And might also help us understand what happened to Venus and Mercury, providing us with additional models in understanding planetary evolution and the potential chance for life to develop on various planets. And so hopefully the Martian missions continue, and more importantly, we'll get even more missions, including some kind of a recovery mission that's going to bring back some of these samples. Because here it's not just exploring one planet, it's about piecing together the grand puzzle of planetary formation, and also understanding the very origins of life itself. But we'll definitely come back and talk more about all of this in some of the future videos once there are some additional studies from Mars. Until then, check out some of the previous videos in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads and can DM me directly, or by joining a channel membership that grants you early access and a few more things. Alternatively, you can also buy the wonderful person t-shirt that features Mars as one of the designs. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.